tend, if it turns out to be useful, then we'll have a recording of it. It might just be chat. It might not be anything particular. Okay, so this is what I think we'll start by doing. If I ask you, well, the sub subject being reactivity. Now, when really reactivity, it's a bit of a non-word, isn't it? Because, um, you know, what we, and everything, we're all reactive. Everything is reactive to some extent. So we're not, we, what we're actually talking about is reactivity, reacting in a way that, that we don't like or the dog's upset about. So either it's going to be ever overexcited, over friendly, over, you know, enthusiastic, or it's going to be perhaps fearful or just very, very excitable. But probably what we normally call reactive, say we say reactive to people, reactive to others. We really normally mean that actually we're trying not to use the word aggressive, aren't we? We're trying to say that the dog is, um, you know, is it is really scared um, and doesn't know quite what to do. So that's what we're really talking about, isn't it? So what we'll look at today is is the two things. Obviously, I think some of you here are going to be here because they're sort of reactivists because the dog goes wild with excitement, and there's other people here because the dog is very reactive to people and really doesn't want them to be anywhere near them. So how about if we go through you sort of one at a time, and if you could just tell us in a few words what 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 the issue is with your dog, and then we'll see um, we'll see how many we've got in common, if you see what I mean. So we can deal with them in in an organised way. Uh, so okay, Coralie, would you like to tell everybody just a little bit in what respect in what respect Ben is reactive to people? Uh, ben doesn't like men, but um doesn't more to the point doesn't like people in the house so obviously we got Ben during lockdown and we were bringing visitors in the back door or the back gate and they were outside so we never saw this problem until of course we were allowed to bring people into the home and then Ben was totally different um very very aggressive um went for my he also has a problem with your husband as well doesn't yeah. he yeah yeah right Okay, that, that, just for now, that gives us a little bit of an idea of what what your thing is. What about what about um, it's it's um, hang on, let me look at this. Sarah, uh, your name's not Josh, is it? No, it's, is that what I'm coming up as? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what's what's the issue with 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 um, your dog? So we've got um, a nine month old Labradoodle um, who's big and very strong, and he's reactive to people um, on walks. Um, so we don't have to be that close to people, but he's, he just goes berserk, um, snarling, barking, um, not in a nice way, it's, it's a fearful way. Right. And he's, he's the same when people come to your house? Um, it's more of an excited, um, okay. say, when, he, when people come in and um, some people he's fine with and other people um, he just no matter how many times they come into the house, he, he still goes for them. Right, okay. So so yours, um, Bear, is mostly out on walks, isn't it? Yeah. If you can generalise. Um, yeah. And um, Coralie's um, um, Ben, it's mostly men, if you could just really, really generalise. What about you, Marina? What's your dog's name? Uh, Smudge. And what sort of dog is that? So he's eight months old. He's from Romania, so we don't know what he is exactly. Could be anything. Yeah. Um, medium sized, and it's a bit of everything, really. Men, um, except for my partner, high visibility clothing, um, joggers outside. So he recently started snarling and barking and like lunching at joggers and, and cyclists, even though that was okay in the beginning. He doesn't like anyone in the house either. Obviously, we don't have tons of visitors right now, but it's a mixture of everything with him. Was he, how long have you had him for? Since the beginning of June. And was he a street dog? Yes. I mean, it really, the Romanian street dogs, they're so different from anything else almost, or, or any street dog, because in the in street, he just had total freedom, didn't he? There were no walls, there were no having to say hello to people. Yeah, um, it's, and he's only eight months old, so it's it's sad, isn't it? Um, Samantha, tell tell us about your dog. What's your, what sort and what name? 
Um, Baloo's a coming up to four years old border collie. Yeah. Um, full intact male, reactive to a lot of things. So he's reactive to men. He's reactive to people that walk past the home, people that come in the home. There's certain people that he will accept. He's a lot more accepting of women. Um, there's lots of different triggers out and about when we're outside the house. Um, and it's mainly re uh, leash, sorry, re reactivity when we're outside. He's right. pretty good off the leash because we have some very good ball and frisbee drives. So his focus is on me and we manage to bypass pretty much everything with that. So at least he still gets some good outside off leash time because really? he focuses purely just on just on us and then when we're on the way home he's so pooped that he doesn't care about anything so if if we're talking about reactivity to people <coughs> we're you're mostly <coughs> anybody who's too close is it yeah anybody that's too close even certain people across the road i mean sometimes it can even be old women which really throws me off guard so mm. i have now learned to anything is a trigger Mm -hmm. There is main ones which I'm like, I know exactly if that makes sense. I now just bypass everything and everyone, but there are certain ones I'm 100% like um, high vis coats, walking sticks, hats. Right. Um, we have a lot of teenagers where we live, and for some reason, he can, he's fine with the younger ones, but as soon as they sort of hit that 14, 15 mark, yeah. He, 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 it's like he knows the difference. It's almost like that puberty age because you can yeah. hear all their voices breaking as well at the same time as we're going past. Yeah. He gets, and it is mainly, mainly it is strange men. strange though, isn't it? Dogs that are reactive to people, it's nearly always is worse with men. <coughs> yeah, well, he was, he was attacked severely as a young pup on one of our first outings after his jabs as well, yeah. um, which was on leash. So a lot of it has been built up after that. Well, but, and, and dogs anyway, even if he hadn't been, he, if he's a fearful dog, he's going, normally it's going to be worse on the lead than off the lead. And yes. That's normal, isn't it? D hang on for one minute. Um, we yeah. just carry on round. So far, um, it looks we're, we're talking about um, sort of fear aggression, really. Aren't we or else you know go away get out of way we haven't come to anything exciting what about what victoria remind me tell us about roxy okay so roxy is a husky cross malamu yeah. um she is coming up to 10 months old now and she is the opposite she loves people and oh, we've got an excited one <laughs> she's too excitable she yeah. will especially if um I time the walk wrong and go around the wrong way. So we walk into all the school kids. She'll just lie down and just wait for the kids to stroke her belly. And I'm like, okay, we have to, we have to go now. <laughs> um, so, and obviously um, she gets excited if people come in the house. So like my parents that come round, um, you know, she'll get very excited when they come round. And it's now at the moment, but before it was sort of, she, she was jumping up. Now we've crossed that part. Now she just runs backwards and forwards through the house and then slips on the floor. <laughs> we'll have a little look, a little chat. Maybe we can find another little strategy for you. What about Megan? No, I, we've talked to you, haven't, haven't we? Maureen, yes, no, have we done? You haven't done you, have we, Megan? Sorry. So, um, so my dog, Olaf, is a five and a half month old Labradoodle and he's very large. He's 45 pounds yes. and he loves people and loves dogs too much and definitely I relate to like the over excitement so when people come to our house to visit or when we go to other people like my parents house to visit um, he gets too excited and jumps and bites and we worked with a different dog trainer and they told us to just keep have people keep walking and ignore him but that doesn't really work because he just still wants their attention so much. And he just wants love and affection and like, um, with, 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 um, hit, with, with, um, Olaf and with Victoria's, um, bear, no, is, is it bear? Roxy, Roxy. Um, we'll have a look at that separately because I've, I've been, I've been thinking about this, whether or not we ought to be teaching them something alternative to do that is in, it, that is incompatible 
with what they're trying to do, which is leap all over people. Now, you can't really teach them to do much when they're in the very, very heightened state. So we need to be looking at teaching them whatever this alternative thing is going to be when they're calm and gradually sort of weave it in. Um, so we'll have a little look at that. So shall we have a look at the, um, the fear ones first and see, see what we can find in common? Okay. So normally I would imagine, and I know, that if a dog is reactive insofar as starts barking at people as soon as he sees them when, I'll say he, um, he sees them when they're out, it's very likely that that same dog isn't going to be very happy if it's in the garden and somebody walks past <clears throat> or if they see somebody walking past the window. <clears throat> I imagine that they're going to be fairly well not like that. So it, would that, is that the same with all of you, that, that your dog is not happy with people walking past the house or hearing people outside the house? Yeah, that would be the same. Um, I know the people I've, I've seen two or three of you uh, on, on, a, on a Zoom, but how would you do these dogs, do they actually see people go past? Can they see them actually go, are they, can they look out the window? Can any of your dogs yes. see out the window? Yes, yes. I have, uh, my dog can see out the windows. I have tried to speak to my partner about like blinding the windows out but he's dead set against it. Well, so let's, that's... Look at this. let's just look at two sides of this. If you think about the dog, somebody starts coming past, they maybe got a dog as well, and your dog starts going mental. If you put words in your dog's mouth, that dog is basically saying, bugger off, go away, go away. <clears throat> Isn't that right? And that dog's going to keep barking until they've gone. And that dog is going to think that barking has actually driven that person on their way and it's successful. Right, well, that works. I shall do that when we're out. So all day, your dog is rehearsing the very behavior you don't want when he goes out. So I would almost say while the dog's still doing that, you're going to have, you're not going to succeed with whatever we come up with or you come up with when you're out. But there is, there are ways of doing it, which maybe, I mean, his border collie is uh, what about that window frosting that's plastic static you just place it on the window you don't have to go right up to the top I'm yeah I'm still I am still persuading my partner it has been it's been a couple of months persuasion um Would you say to him look it's any treat from B&Q can we just try it for a few days and see what happens because he'll probably be dead relieved that the dog stopped barking so much Yes, this is the point I have tried to make because I, I have said, look, you're the one that gets most annoyed by the barking. Let's yeah. let's at least try. Yeah. Um, so so hopefully, but once I've said I've had this conversation as well, that should hopefully work in my favour. <laughs> so well, you can try it. It doesn't have yeah. to go up to the top. You can see to higher than the dog. You can see out. It's not going to block your view. It doesn't make it dark like having the blinds down is. And you know when. When, when the dog does bark, then that next thing is really, you need to do something about it. I know this is probably a bit boring for the people that I've already seen, but um, have you, have any of you, I think the three of you, have you, most two of you, um, have covered your windows and has it made a difference? Has anybody done that? Yeah, I have in my lounge. I did it before I had been actually for privacy because the window's so big. He doesn't notice people coming up until the light goes on, um, right. but he's he's at the back of the house anyhow. He gets he's not in the kitchen when I'm at work, and he has free reign to the back, and the back right. doesn't have people. So, yeah, but I think it does work. Yeah, I, I think that's the first thing you have to do, really, because the, it, if your dog's reactive to people when you're out, how is it reactive? I mean, the dog is going to see a person, and then unless you do something about it, it's going to, and if you keep walking towards that person, it's going to be starting to lunge and bark and say, basically, go away, go away, you're too close, isn't it? So you're having, having a, the dog rehearsing it at home before you even start. Hmm. Um, I'm wondering what's going to be the most useful thing to do here. Let's look at, just let's look at people coming into the house first. Then we'll look at people meeting when you're out, and then we'll look at the excitement. 
but of course dealing with several if I saw one of you at a time as people have seen you know I unpick it I go into a lot of detail and we we can't go into hi Bridget oh you look all right <laughs> um we can't go into an awful lot of detail so this is very general stuff because you know obviously if we have a meeting we actually unpick it and look at the actual detail of your own dog and the, all the little foibles and the rest of it. But generally speaking, we will look first of all at people coming to the house. Then we'll look at people you meet to see when you're on walks. And then we look at the excitement thing. Okay. So the first thing is when people come to the house and your dog is, if it's a dog that does not like people, you then got a problem because of course that dog is going to be barking from the moment that it hears the doorbell or knocker. And then, um, then you have a choice really. Do you hang on to the dog? Do you let the dog keep barking? Or do you help the dog out? I mean, I have my own ways of doing these things. Um, what, what do you do about it, uh, Marina? Oh. When somebody comes to the house. See, uh, that, that's a bit of a problem because, I mean, with this current situation, there's not masses of people coming around. That's a problem, yeah. But we had the neighbours here a couple of weeks ago and um, Smudge had to be upstairs to begin with. They got settled, they sat down. Then we brought him in on the lead and yeah. we threw down some uh, treats in front of them so he could sniff and have something positive. Yes. And he would stop barking at some point and he would accept the woman right away but um the the man was still a problem so even after a while he was quiet and then all of a sudden he was sort of going towards the man and starting barking again he was sitting at his feet looking up at him and started barking yeah. and i think it, it's also something i want your attention sort of thing but he only does it with the men not with the yeah. women so we had to put him back on the lead after some yeah. um, some time, really. Yeah. Um, and that is fairly typical. Uh, and, in fact, one of the things you did do, is, uh, yeah, you've done half of what I would suggest. I would suggest always that the people come in and they're sitting down before you introduce the dog. Um, and also, May, sprinting stuff around the floor is very good. You don't want to have the people feeding him, really, because you're not trying to bribe him. And I think if the people are going to feed, the best thing to do is for them to throw food away from them. So actually, they're almost sending the dog away rather than trying to bri bribe them to come. In. I think in that circumstance, I've, I personally would have probably kept him on lead all the time or very loose lead or maybe let him just trail the lead around the floor because... Um, I would probably have, have, have asked him to come and sit next to me, you know, and, uh, but it's, it's hard without knowing the detail, but I certainly would always say the worst thing for the dog is if there is the dog in a doorway in the room and then a person standing up walks towards the dog. And the two things, first of all, that's intimidating being approached and it's probably a strange person as well. And, and standing up isn't good. So the best way really is, once the person's, is to have the dog somewhere else until the person's actually sitting down and then then bring the dog to the person if you're going to do that. But if, if, if I were going to do a work, work on this, we'd be looking at a lot of detail exactly how you're going to do that and what happens when the dog starts again and all the rest of it. But I think the basic rule is best for the, per the person to be sitting down and then the dog joining the person. Um, Yes. Um, the, the other thing is, yeah, uh, Megan. One, I think that someone is might be in the waiting room. I heard a ding. Oh, thank you. Well done. Um, no, there isn't actually, fortunately. Oh, okay, great. Thank you I, very I, much. Thank oh, you. yeah. I just have a quick question on that. So yeah. in this scenario, you would have the dog be in a different room and then a person come, rings the doorbell or like, so someone rings the doorbell to let you know they are there. Yeah. You put the dog in another room when you hear the doorbell. And then you have the person come and sit down somewhere where they, the dog doesn't see them until they sit down. And then once they're seated, you give them a treat or you give the human a treat and then let the dog in. And then you have the human throw the treat at the dog. Maybe. It all depends. But your dog isn't, isn't scared of people, is he? He likes people too much. He's no, not. I wouldn't do the same thing with that. Oh, okay. 
Um, with with a dog, the, the other the other thing about this, of course, is once the dog hears the bell or the knocker, he already goes into a frenzy. So you've got the dog already in a very heightened state before the person even comes in. I mean, if if, if you could perhaps get the person to text you and then just quietly take put the dog somewhere else and then they're sitting down and you know, it would be a whole lot easier because the dog is already much too highly aroused before the person's come in. So I would, I would first of all be working on the doorbell. If you have a knocker, I would change it for a bell because you think what that must be like to a dog, somebody banging on the door. And I would also do a lot of work desensitizing the dog to the doorbell. No, not so it's associated with somebody coming to the door necessarily. I'd ring it a lot myself. Every time I ring it, I'd chuck him some food. And I'd also teach him if, like, um, if say there's a gate or you've got another room to put him in, I'd teach him, he hears the doorbell and you say, come on, in the kitchen, good dog food, shut the door. Okay, I'll shut the gate. And do it lots and lots of times. So every time the dog hears a doorbell, it knows the routine. It is go in the kitchen, all right? And then, um, and then it's going to be much calmer when you let him out. Because when the doorbell rings for real, the number of times that doorbell rings, it's very unlikely that it's going to be a real person because you do it enough. And it sort of desensitizes the dog to the doorbell. The other thing then is, is this business of, it, if we go on then to the dogs that are too friendly, I think for a different reason, the dog needs to be out of the room and the person sitting down. I don't think we need lots of food. We don't need throwing, because the t point about food really is just to sort of lace the environment so it feels, it feels better to the dog and there's some good associations being built up. I think, I think if the dog's very, very excited and pleased to see somebody, they don't need good associations, do they? And need them all need to calm down a bit. Um, I think in this case, it's probably even more important to deal with the doorbell to desensitize to the bell so that it's no big deal. But I would say if the dog is jumping up, flying all over the people and jumping up and wants a huge fuss, it, the, the best thing really would be if that dog learned that if he sat down peacefully, he'd get his fuss. That would be the best thing, wouldn't it? Now, of course, because a dog is so high with excitement, there is no way you can teach it to sit down for the fuss. So here's another thing I'd take right back to the beginning. I'd start teaching him to sit down for a fuss in all sorts of situations when he's not excited. I'd, 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 do, it with my, I'd, I'd do it myself. I'd sit, sit down and make a bit of fuss of him. I'd do, I'd do it all over the place. I'd, I'd go and have a place perhaps in the hall, not far away from the from the front door where I deliberately take him and ask him to sit down and give him a little bit of fuss. And then maybe other members of the family and people he knows very well. I wouldn't ask him to do it until it was really, really established. And I'd also do it very gradually upping the difficulty, if you like. So, you know, we, people we know he's going to be very excited with, I wouldn't expect him to do it because he can't. But then half the thing, I think he's training the people who come. Because with an excited dog, I, I, too many people will will um, excite them, won't they? You really have to have people to to keep them calm. So I, I think keep the keep them keep them calm. Um, teach an alternative behaviour. I mean, sitting is an obvious one. Lying down, you could teach lying down for the fuss. It's a little bit um, harder. Some dogs are really good if you put something in their mouth. A lot of dogs, something in the mouth is all they need to calm them down a little bit. And they'll patrol around with a thing in the mouth, wagging their tail, look what I've got, and sort of back off from the person a little bit. So I think a lot of it's individual, isn't it? Um, it's much easier to have a dog that's too excited than a dog that's scared, though, I think. <laughs> Well, the problem I have is that she's so excited about people, but she's still not sure about dogs. So <laughs> it's like yin and yang, really, because she loves the people, but then yeah. she's, she's just completely opposite with dogs. And you haven't met Pluto, Theo. <laughs> <laughs> no, haven't. You're right. He's got, he's got the nickname, My Monkey Man, because I swear he climbed down from a monkey tree. He's just... <laughs> he's too happy. <laughs> oh far too happy yeah i think all these things you know this almost goes to prove that there's not one size fits all you know you can look at all the facebook posts you like 
Um, but each case is sort of different. There's so many variables from each thing. I mean, it can be generalized and say, well, you know, it's best of the person sitting down and somebody joins them afterwards. But then there are going to be all sorts of variations. Like if you ask the dog to go in the kitchen and it loses sight of you for one minute and he panics and barks and makes him even more stressed than if he was there, then that isn't very good either. So, you know, it had to work out what the best thing is. But I think like everything, you can do it if you have a plan and you start, start at the beginning. So if you want your dog to be calm when somebody comes in, teach him the, the, the manners, the trick and the rest of it. So it's a really well-established behavior before the pers a person starts, comes in the house. So you've got it, you know, you've got it established first. There's no way you can expect a dog who's wildly excited or I say sort of scared or um, aggressive to do something like sit. It's not reasonable, is it? Really? I actually have been trying that with Pluto just lately and mm -hmm. because Mars is very biddable anyway yeah. he he has been getting better and following suit almost yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah they did break the mold with that one right. um mm -hmm. but no he's he's getting better and it does work that does mm -hmm. I have noticed a difference. He's I think you've just got to, to train the behavior before you put it before you start trying to attach it to the problem if you like and you were right about the toy in mouth as well because Pluto mouth, yeah. he always grab someone will knock on the door or even when we come through the front door and um, from being I don't know going shopping yeah he'll come to the door see us when we open the door run off go and get a teddy or a ball <laughs> And then run back to they do us. that, don't they? But yeah. something in their mouth calms them down. And, yeah. And that's that. I, another thing you can do, as long as your dog doesn't have guarding oh. tendencies, is to have some special bone or something you just give to the dog when somebody comes. Because if mm. it's got a bone in his mouth, it's going to help. But let's look at a little look at um, see just any general things which we can do to help help the reactivity when out. So the first thing is, I would say, to have a go at Samantha again, <laughs> try to avoid the rehearsal at home in any every way possible. And, and you know, if, if, if he's barking at home and, and your partner's yelling at him as well, that is more, more total negatives to add to people, isn't it? You know, it's not making people very nice if, if it brings out all this sort of... No, I, I do constantly yeah. say, I say the louder you are, the louder he's going to become. Yeah. I was like, you just, yeah. just ignore him. Um, but he, he's, he's a difficult one because the dog also does it for attention. Also, yeah. Yeah. so it, it's sort of like he. Um, but out and about, we follow a care protocol, so we do quite a lot of injuring. So most of the time, I do manage to succeed in turning the corner before we get too close. Um, yeah, that's that's the thing. Let's look at the walk thing in a very general terms is you need to get the dog to feel feel differently about people. And I know that's easy to say, but it's not the barking, the lunging, the pulling and all the rest of it that actually you're dealing with, are you? You're dealing with the emotion inside the dog, which makes him do it. It's not like a, a trick, he's just putting it on and pretending. It's not like this is, um, yeah, it's something you can teach him. You can't teach him not to do it. All you can stop is doing is it's feeling the thing that's making him do it. And so that's where the um, desensitization and the counter conditioning come in. So the two things you have to have, I mean, I'm trying to think, I think I bored you with my analogy last time. Actually, you were here, weren't you, before, Bridget, but nobody else was. I think probably people who I've been to see, I, I probably bored you with this. Let's just do it again. I always use a, the analogy of a very big field with a railway line at the end, a train line, okay. Now your dog, for some reason or other, is very, very, very reactive to trains. Absolutely hates them. It, same thing as you might do with men, or with um, people, of any, people of any sort, anything, children, people on bikes, scooters, anything, whatever, that, that's how he, this particular dog feels about trains. And I only use trains because they stay in one place. Um, and because it's a big field though, there will be a distance where in there he can see and hear the trains, 
even if it's a very distance, without reacting. Because whatever emotions he's got inside him, which is going to be driving that, which is going to be a probably fear of some sort, he's not going to feel that, that, that distance, especially if he's not trapped on a lead. Okay, so if you went there 10 times a day, went to this field, bit by bit, you'd start to get a little bit closer, but it would take a hell of a long time. Now that would be systematic desensitization. It basically means it, he always got to be kept at his comfort threshold. If you want him to feel better quicker, you have to counter condition. That means that for, in this analogy, train comes and chicken rains down, train goes no chicken. Another train, chicken comes down. He could be barking, he could be doing anything, it's nothing to do with him. The train triggers chicken, the train's a good thing. And you, it's nothing to do with you if you're near him either. Okay, so what would happen then is you can imagine he's going to get to the trains quite a lot more quickly. He's going to realize that trains actually are good news. Okay, they only trigger something good. Now, two things happen here, what we do with other dogs. First of all, we've taken them well, our dogs, well over their threshold, too near the other dogs too soon. And we're not making good things happen. It's rather like a train comes and instead of the food um, sprinkling down, you kick the dog. So if you're jerking the lead, he's got uncomfortable equipment, he's got a head halter, so you're yanking his head low, you've got a choke chain, you're cross, you're frightened, you're anxious, all these things, you're adding bad things. It's like kicking the dog when the train comes. Do you see, you're adding bad things to it. Um, and the other thing that people do, they think, well, I'm stronger than my dog. My dog's going to have to get used to this. And they go like stand next to the trains and that's flooding. And that very occasionally might work, very, very occasionally, but normally you're going to never make progress and things further, further back. And it's not good for your relationship or anything. So you can see the point, but it gets very difficult because we haven't many people haven't got ideal places they can go and have a walk where they know they're not going to have a dog too close or an awfully dog suddenly run up that's where dogs are concerned but it's the same but with people it's easier because if it's just people you're not going to have a person suddenly running up to you can i play with you play with your dog are they you know not like another dog might so at least people are a little bit more predictable and to so, let you know that isn't a boring analogy that's really good <laughs> Well, it's a good way of looking at it, I think, when you heard it. It, it's, it's, um, it, it is it's just how it is. It's, it's a scientific fact that to counter condition and desensitize is a way, is the way really to change how something feels about something. But it does leave you with a big problem really because everybody's environment's different. You know, you go out, how you walk down the road, you've only got one way you can walk and there are people all over the place. And it's hard. So, I mean, if you really wanted to work at it and you were lived in a busy street, you just have to go in the car and find somewhere where there aren't many people. And the other thing, of course, is if you avoid people, that's no good either, is it? If you ignore them, avoid them completely, you're never going to, um, you're never going to change how the dog feels. I know with you, um, Coralie, and it's the men thing and your, and your husband, we're actually working on that quite specifically with your husband, aren't we? Um, yeah. In a minute, it'd be interesting to hear how that's going. <laughs> you can tell us. <laughs> but with the, um, and we are doing a version of, actually, it's Coralie, let's, let's have Coralie's story because she, her husband, they've had the dog for a few months now. And he's, the dog seems to be very friendly with her husband when he's sitting down, too friendly. But as mm -hmm. soon as he gets up or when he comes in the door, a dog it really barks at him, it's not very good. And we, we have had various plans, but actually, um, oh, there he is. Ah, oh, there we go. There's the dog. <laughs> and the husband. <laughs> and a glass of beer, by the look of it. That's a cool tip. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, so what's, and I had this idea that we'd have a, a pattern game. And this was going to be um, to build up a little game with the dog so the dog knows what's going to happen. So, so it's Robert. Has, has food, has bits of kibble or something. Oh, you're going to use cheese, weren't you? And tell me how it went. Tell me what you did and how, you, how it went. Uh, yeah, so um, Ben's a very fussy eater. Um, so he'll only eat salmon and tuna with his dinner and he can't eat certain foods. 
So what we did was he loves cheese. So nobody else is allowed to feed him cheese for any reason whatsoever. So that's just Robert's speciality. He has little tiny, tiny pieces of grated cheese that he carries in a pot. So um, whenever he gets up, he lifts the pot out and opens it very slowly and Ben is totally, as soon as he puts his hand in his pocket, he knows Ben knows what he's going to do. Um, and he throws the cheese away from him as he gets up and then he continues to throw the cheese every sort of three steps that he takes. He'll go into the kitchen and get himself tea or coffee or whatever. He'll close the kitchen door while he's in there. Um, and then when he comes out, he'll throw the cheese away from him again um, and do the same thing back to the back. Is to that seat. stopping the barking? It's, he hasn't growled at all. Hasn't really? gone quite at right, all. Because I think after there's several months of growling at him, he's got into a habit of it. And if yeah. you can carry on doing this, I had a, what my plan was slightly different, but what you're doing works fine. My plan was actually that when Robert stood up, that, he, that he, the pattern game is one, two, three, throw a bit of food. So it's get, as you get up, throw the food and you count out loud, one, two, three. And after that, there's a bit of food every time. So then the dog, as soon as you say one, the dog then is begins very look very keen and very interested because he knows what's coming next and two and three then the food, so it means that you can actually get the top dog's attention really much more easily. So uh, the way Robert's doing it is to to do the top of the, the to bring attention to the. I would I would try now not to do that. Keep hands off the thing. Have the have the have the food maybe a little bit as he's standing up, but as he walks. Don't don't have the food in the hand at all. So the dog starts paying attention to him now, because it's almost bribery otherwise. Right. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. see, let's see if, if 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 you don't mind, have a go at that, Robert, will you? Because I don't. Yeah. Have, um, I'd really be interested to see how it does. You might, if you start one, two, three, food, you might soon be able to get up without throwing him food, as long as you say the word one. Yeah. But you say the word one, you know it's going to follow with two, and he knows it's going to follow with three, and he knows what comes next. Yeah, 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 yeah. Certainly, I try, it, try it for me. You're my guinea pig. Yeah. He tried tonight now to come in and throw food away from him as soon as he came through the door. Ben started that, that's to different. When he comes in from work, that's yeah. perfect. Perfect. Right. Yeah, well, no, you've we had growl. a few days. You've had a few days with no growling, haven't you? Yeah, until tonight when he came through the door. Okay. And then he really growled and kept growling at him until eventually I moved and said and called Ben. And Ben looked at me but refused to do what he was told. And um, so that? Robert then got the cheese out and threw the cheese away and then he moved. Right. Well, you, I think we, you need to start changing that to counting because okay. we don't want him being bribed. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good, it's a, it is a, a bit of an example. It is working, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's so certainly it's, it's helping, isn't it? See what yeah, it is. Well, definitely, it's it's completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, good. Good. Because tonight there earlier on when I went into the kitchen, um, I didn't close the door, but he sat yes. outside the kitchen door and waited until yes. I come out again. And then what would he normally says, do? What would he have done before? Well, I would have closed the door. Oh right. And went in. I made tea and coffee so he, he wouldn't follow me in the end. But as I say, he sat outside the door and waited, but the night I left the door open yeah. and he didn't come in. He just sat at the door and waited. And That's once good. I come out again, I left him a bit of cheese and come back up and he, he was good. It's a strange thing, isn't it? Because you can see how relaxed he is with you when you're sitting down. Mm -hmm. what, what breed of dog is he? Springer. I think this is another example, though, of dogs who are uneasy finding it difficult when people are standing up, and especially men. Yeah. And we don't know his background. We know that he wasn't very well treated. He was an ex gun dog, field gun dog. So Have the vet said to us. strong as well, I've heard, spring. The very. Time. And the vet said that he yeah. hadn't been socialized with humans or with um, animals. So he's quite reactive when he's out, but not in a bad way. He's. He a bit would like you, um, what the other girl was saying. Some some other was saying he would kind of um, lunge at a, a dog, but he's he just wants to meet them and he gets too, too excited. I was going to say, know. could it be over excitement? Yeah, it is. Know? Yeah. Well, I think that some of the um, really excited do dogs that we've got a couple here 
I actually don't think that is pure pleasure and excitement and joy. I think that being quite so excited is mask some anxiety. Right. I mean, you know, if you greet, if you meet somebody and that person is wildly excited, hugging you and jumping all over, you know, you know that they're not really very chill. They're a bit anxious to please you and stuff. I, I'm not convinced that it's. Yeah, I have to stick my arm out when my sister wants to hug me now. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away. Three meter rule. <laughs> <laughs> you know, are, are there any variations that we, I think in a way Samantha's is a little bit different because you have a border collie with, in a way, quite exaggerated border collie issues, haven't you? Yes. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, it's a very border collie thing, a lot of this, liking to I mean, control anything that's moving. And if it happens we, to be a person, there you go. Yeah, we had we had border collies growing up, so that's why I went for a border collie because I was like, it's my comfort zone, it's where I'm at. Like, I'm happy to be out for all day. Like, I was like, gives me an excuse not to do the housework. I'm I'm happy with a border collie. Um, and when I went and got him, looking back at the, they weren't bad people. It wasn't like a puppy meal, but looking back, I don't think they should have bred from the dad because he was just in the background barking twenty four seven. Twenty two year old me didn't click. They were in like a farm sort of environment. I just did not, it just didn't click until later when we bring him home and all these issues started to come around. And because of the environment that they live in, their dog doesn't see people. They like live on a farm type of thing. So I, I don't even know if they fully realise what they've done either. Um, so he it took him an hour to approach me when I went to go view him when he was nine weeks old. So I have a German Shepherd who's very similar. She, I brought her home from a client when she was about five months old. She was so frightened. She'd been in the barn all her life. She was, she'd only seen one person and that was the person who fed them. And she was so scared, I ignored her for about five weeks and she wouldn't come near me. And when eventually she dared come near me, I still ignored her because I moved suddenly. She's now 12 years old. Even up until about three years ago, if I'd said to her, Mindy, come here. She's so obedient, she'll come, but she have a she'll do a little tiddle on the way. Even that is too fresh, you know, and that is how she is after all this time. Oh, you I know. want to kiss her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never lovely. spoke to him. I didn't overcrowd him or anything like that. But his sibling, he was a one of two, his sibling straight up giving me like all the love. They kept that one. And I just completely ignored Baloo. I just waited for him in his own time. And then eventually he'd come over and he and he dropped a bone in front of me mm. and I my heart just went I was like I'm not going home about this dog now he just rang me his toy after ignoring me like, <laughs> I was like, about the border collie is you you it, it, he needs to work doesn't he this we do a lot of frisbee and a lot of trick training when we're out and about like he's That's he's he's learned a lot of tricks yeah. and he's happy because he's focused and he he loves he he loves it have a go with the people thing. When you're out, see if you can sneak some covering on your windows. Have a go when you're out of choosing a quiet time. And as soon as you put, see a person, this is how it is. You, he, you want him to see the person. It's no good making a quick escape so he doesn't even see them. So it's basically, there's a person, come on, we're going this way. So you can, tr that seeing the person triggers all nice happiness in you and moving off in the other direction okay and then as you go feed in so and that works with for the dog trigger good things from you and you're not going to force him yet try that for a while see if you can find places you're not going to find too many people and the minute you see a person you give him a frisbee you might not even food give him a ball to carry whatever something nice okay instead of carrying on near the person immediately go off at a tangent or turn around or anything you like. But once he's seen the person, you you need to put distance before he starts to get aroused. Now, if you did that, if you could do that every time, if it was possible, if the world was nicely controlled, you would eventually be getting quite near that person before you had to increase distance because he would know that that's what you're going to do. And then you do exactly what you're doing now, <clears throat> keep him busy. You, you give me this advice um, last week with the reactivity on leash right. and it works. He's, he's 
you, the let's go has been um, I've been implemented that and he's That's the uh, other one, Bridget, thank you. Yeah. The, other, the other one if, te- if you haven't already teach a reliable let's go. So that means here we are walking down the road, no people, no nothing. And all of a sudden, just because you feel like it, you go, let's go. And you turn around and you run the other way and you have a party, you do something the dog loves, then turn back and carry on like nothing's happened. So that means and if a person suddenly comes out of a gate or round a corner, you go, let's go. Your dog knows immediately that that means, oh, we're going to have a party in the other direction. It's not like the great escape. And um, <laughs> my reactive little boy has... <laughs> uh, one day when we did it actually sat and was amiable with a border collie who stalks him when he walks past and they don't get on at all and because I've been redirecting and doing the calming methods as well he is um, he, he sat while I had a chat with his owner that, really um, good work. I mean, that's pretty pretty quick. Sometimes it's going to get months and months. Yeah. And life happens and you can't avoid people. It gets difficult. And then, you know, you uh, you mess it up. By... He's, he's very clever and he, he's, he's very sharp. It's just his brain moves far too fast because of how anxious he gets. Yeah. Um, but when he, has, when he has given the opportunity to calm down and slow down, give him chance to think things through he's he's really good actually you know he shines out and you can see mm. so thank you for that <laughs> well, the one thing i think is quite important is that you don't avoid people altogether mm. and you have to, have to see them if you if you avoid them you're getting nowhere but the other thing is not to flood by going too close one one thing that is quite strange to a lot of people uh, of um, dogs find is that if if there's lots of people, like somebody takes them through the town, they seem okay. But you take the dog somewhere and just one person appears and then the dog goes mental. I don't know if that happens with any of yours. Yes. Yeah, it does with Bear. Mm. I mean, he's not fine when we go through a high street, but he's a lot calmer than yeah. when we the see. The suddenness of a single person. I, and I always say to people, I think if I was in a park and just one person, particularly a man, appeared, I'd feel I'd be very aware of him being there. But if I was in a busy park, I'd feel quite invisible. Yeah. See, if we're if we're in like an open space and there's something on coming and I sort of I'll do like the distance. I know the certain distance where he'll react and not react. So we can walk past people and dogs at a certain distance without a reaction for him, from him. He just stares. But if somebody was to like walk around a blind corner, yeah. then yeah. that that would just that that bam there'd be that there'd be an absolute meltdown but we actually we live in a town mm. but we're also in the middle of the countryside as well if that makes sense or on one sort of side where we actually are we have to sort of walk through part of the town to get to the countryside yeah. so it's it's a mixture of of both quite often you see us walking in the middle of the road yeah. when, when there's people either side of the road and the road's clear that you're quite often you'll see me sort of walking in the middle of the road so I, I don't like you can upset add, anyone. I think if you can add to it when he sees a person make sure that he's at a comfortable distance maybe just make a little bit more space if you can and make something good happen it's almost he's not like, food motivated no. he's he's so wired there's no no food oh, whatsoever nice. Can you, why not try, if you can, find a very quiet time and try to try to work on him when he's not wired up. So he's far enough, far enough away from the people. And just sort of sit there and treat him as people wander Absolutely. past, like a little, like a little could, stalker. Perfectly. If you could find a bench, which didn't have yes. people, like a bench at a distance from a pathway or something, well, that, and every time anyone comes past, what's well, another person? Give him something he loves, like cheese. That yes. would be perfect. Okay, we will do that. We will if do that. I've got a few spots. You, you'd say, come on, we're going now. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he'll no, build no. trust in you. Yes, that that's he's he's got this he's got this thing with the leash that so trying to he's such a puller. We have tried every, I mean, it can take me an hour to walk somewhere that takes five minutes because I'm stopping and starting so much. I have this two young children. my whole principle of 
and it of the pulling is nothing to do with he can't walk nicely on a loose lead it's to do with the fact he's too aroused yes pulling, yeah no, he's so if you can work on you can work on nice walking around your garden and around your house he'd work perfectly we'll walk beautifully wouldn't he we don't actually have enough space to do walking like that where we live. I mean, we've got a good sized house, but do there's no house. Do it just literally, the house. yeah, just literally. We'll, we'll try. We do have another dog who gets very much underfoot. Um, so, well, you'll have to get the partner to have the other dog for a little while. Walk, yes. him, walk him around the house, in and out, round the table, all the rest of it, nice and loosely, <coughs> all the time, rewarding and just so he knows what loose lead walking feels like and then when you when then do you go out your front door at the garden gate <coughs> yes well this is it's living living in the north everybody uses the back door and where we live our front door almost isn't accessible so it's the sound of the gate that triggers his reactivity to people coming into the house. And it's also the door, the gate we go okay, in and well, out to know, go if out. I was, if I was doing work with you, we'd be, do, we'd be dealing with that. We'd be desensitizing him to the sound of the gate. But with your walking practice, you do walk round the house, then go to the back door, leave it open, walk in and out of the garden about 20 times, all nicely loosely. <laughs> now go to the gate out of the <coughs> garden and don't go walking down the road, go two, three feet, come back in again, make a game of it. So you, yeah. you need to get established loose lead walking because that's not your problem isn't pulling on lead your problem is that he's too wired up and but you yeah. know, change of direction works too much, too much frisbee <coughs> if you change the direction you go in and quickly and we've tried all of I, I've, I've, I've tried all of that yeah. i i have tried all of that <laughs> i've been working on least loose walking for about three years now since he so was house, i'll guarantee you'd have him more yeah than in the house. And, and then the house desensitizing sitting back or standing back from people and just work on that one thing in the house you could put like if you've got dining room chairs you could put them in a line and do weaves in and out with him yeah, I mean, he's he really he does leg weaves and everything like that anyway. So he, he's he's pretty good when it comes to like sort of obedience, but not like rally is in like walking to hill. The rest of it, he's well, he's re really focused when it comes to other things apart from walking directly next to me. That's but border collies are the dog of choice of trainers, aren't they? Because they're the hardest work and they're the cleverest. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm glad I haven't trained you. <laughs> Spaniel's more like hard work, I think. <laughs> I love Cocker He Spaniel. definitely keeps me busy and it's lots of fun. When it when, when he's not being tormented, bless him, we do have fun. You have to. <laughs> the have to love. Yeah. <laughs> is, there any, is there anything you'd like to chat about, Marina? Because we haven't really talked to you very much. Or Victoria, for that matter. I mean, as I said, it's a, it's a big um, bag of well fun <laughs> we have with smudge so um it's just as you said little things we're trying to take a step back with certain things it's just so hard to get people to volunteer and train with him in the house um yes yeah, yeah i think um that is a sort of a case really but which is it needs needs help in a way it's, um, there's so much stuff involved in it, isn't it? I mean, there's not much we can do now with that because there's so many things. But I think the same principle applies. If you can find one thing at a time and, and work on desensitizing to that one thing, the trouble is when it's lots of things, it's... Um... But it's, it's, it's like another thing I bore people with. I always think of it like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, you can start working on one thing and start working on another and another. They all start to add together and they help each other, have some sort of little chain reaction. Um, so, you know, the more you do, you just keep keep chipping away at it, really. And the thing is to do is that the two things use distance or intensity. So if it's a noise that is scared or you make it a very soft noise. If it's a physical thing, you keep a distance. So you use the intensity or distance and as far as you possibly can, and then expose at that distance um, lot, as much as you can and let the thing, whatever it is, trigger something good. So those are the general principles. Um, 
if you will, sort of work out and work out ways of adapting it. Mm. Anyway, Victoria, anything? Um, so I think there's not much else. I think um, like distraction is it's literally just like trying to avoid too many people um, all at once because then obviously she does get overexcited. So we go the other way. <laughs> it's I'm um, at the moment again. Cheese works wonders with every dog. <laughs> How about you trying the pattern game? <clears throat> all yeah. right, round the house, <clears throat> round the garden when nothing's happening. Maybe you can make it one, two, three, four, five. Food. Yeah. But count each of your own steps. One, two, three, four, five. Food. Yeah. Um, because once you've done that a few times, as soon as you start counting, you're going to get the dog's attention. Yeah. You're going to get much better attention than if you keep food feeding. <clears throat> yeah. Because of that anticipation. And you know, you might find that that helps calm down a bit. The other thing that I have is obviously I've got the kids. So if my two boys are running off because they've seen something else, then I have the problem with her. She's like, okay, let's go. But we're walking down the road. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. You it's can't do it there, there, is it? Of course no, you know. Which no. makes it harder. I'm then yeah. trying to train the kids. You're going to have to put your kids on harnesses and leads as well. Yeah. I would totally be fueling that dog because I'd see her and just fall in love. <laughs> I'd be the one trying to run over and hook her. <laughs> it's good, though. Yeah. The bigger the better. Yeah, she's she's pretty big now. She just every time I look at her, she seems to be a bit bigger every day. <laughs> I bet she's beautiful. She's she stole a stick from outside, and she's eating the stick. Oh, she's lovely. She's big, isn't she? It's being pulled along by that, running after the children. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> she also, we've, we've also found that she uh, is now reactive to squirrels, which wasn't a thing until about a week ago when squirrels are now a thing. <laughs> Has anybody yeah. done that sexier than a squirrel thing? I've forgotten their name. <clears throat> Absolute dogs. Absolute dogs, sexier than a squirrel basically making yourself far by all the games and things that they do far more fun than the squirrel <laughs> i imagine that's it's, it's a very good way of looking at things i just um but you know he's so dynamic this chap it tires me out just to look at him yeah yeah right, I, I can't watch him he's too excitable for me, <laughs> too much for me. yeah <laughs> um Megan, it's a, I, we haven't been very helpful to you really but it's been nice to see you <laughs> Yeah. Um, do you have any advice for what I should do? Because it seems like some of the stuff that you talked about, like some of it, maybe I, so I, I've been taking notes and I think I'm going to try like a few of the different things, but is there anything that you think I should start with? Tell me exactly again what it is that you, yes. So regardless of if it's someone coming to our house or if we go to someone's house, Olaf gets too excited and jumps and nips at them. Never hard and it's never in an aggressive way. It's just his way of showing he's excited. And he's often described as mouthy because he just like puts his mouth on people's arms. And it's almost like he's like saying hello or something. Um, well, one thing to bear in mind is dogs don't regularly do something if there's nothing in it for them. So he's getting some sort of reinforcement even if it makes him feel better, he's getting some reinforcement, some sort. And probably a lot of it is it gets a lot of attention from you because you're telling him to stop doing it. Um, well, so I, we've, I, told, we've told I, people to completely ignore him hmm. until he's good and calm down. But you're keeping him on lead until he has calmed down. Use a bit of management, make it so he just can't do it. Maybe then also have something to put in his mouth. Um, maybe you could, if you start off like that, maybe teach him, look, if you put your bottom on the floor, the person will say hello to you. I think you need to train the people. We, it worked really well with Van. 
um, putting something in the mouth because he still he, he does the same thing. He puts his, his mouth right around your arm, um, and he doesn't he doesn't try and hurt anybody. But I don't know what it it, it is something a directive thing. But tennis balls he loves, and if you put a tennis ball in his mouth, he won't touch anybody. <laughs> I find I a lot of retrieving when things. are really excited and worked up, they need something in their mouth, and you know it can be somebody's arm. I think a lot of working breeds and retrieving breeds tend to do this more. And I think it is because of the drive and the excitement, what they get naturally. Um, it's a very calming thing, something in the mouth. Yeah. You know, people say, oh, the, my dog always brings something to the door um, in their mouth as a present. It's not that at all, I'm sure. It's just because if, when somebody comes to the door, well, it definitely finds something to calm himself down and goes and picks up a toy. It definitely isn't. I mean, I have two black Labradors, Mars and Pluto, and Pluto is the one that I was on about that always brings the, but he's the problem child. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't say that really. He's just a little bit feral. Um, <laughs> I imagine but he's sweet, but he, he's, he's not bringing the ball or the teddy to, uh, to have. You know, you'll say, can I have that? Is that for me? And he'll say, absolutely not, and run off because he wants you to chase him and play a game. But, you know, we've, we've just decided, no, we're not going to, in, you, you know, you're not going to train us. <laughs> come, come come with the teddy, fair enough, but then you can sit down with it. <laughs> Either that or he'll just stand and he'll get closer and closer to your face with this teddy. And he'll just wig, be wiggling at you all the while he's doing it. Has no <laughs> concept of personal space at all. <laughs> and he's basically trying to push this teddy into your mouth. And he's, <laughs> play with me, play with me. But... No, it is. It is like Theo says. I think definitely, um, it, it it helps them cope with excitement and anxiety. But it's a good idea to train them to have something when someone yes. comes. If it's if it's a dog that has to grab arms, then I think that that's probably a dog that you could put something in its mouth. Well, Sounds like he used to do. Thing with Olaf is even though he loves to put people's arms in their mouths, he doesn't care for toys or bones um, at all. Which, like, the good part is he's never destroyed any of his toys, but like, he never plays with them, even like when we try and like incentivize him. I tried him on uh, one of these um, yak, yak. Yeah, so he like hardly cares about the yak bones. The only bone he does care about, and I've also tried the like wood thing, and yeah. he does, yeah, he doesn't care. Um, and um, those were both recommendations I got from you last time. But what's funny is like when I bring those with him somewhere in hopes or like when other dogs come over, other dogs love them. Um, the, <laughs> only, the only bone that Olaf likes is the imitation rawhide bone by Earth Animal, but he can devour it within five minutes. But well, then- if you can see somebody, well, that devouring it will help calm him down, won't it? Mm. Yeah, well, so that's what we've tried, um, like giving him, like, for example, my dad has two dogs. And so when I go there, I give them each a bone immediately because otherwise like they like fight. And I tried the first time just bringing Olaf a bone, but then the other dogs tried to steal his imitation rawhide bone. And then it was like a, a worse idea. So the next time I brought three and I gave it to him right away but then like immediately after he finished the bone, he was like jumping, biting, like nipping, like not I think nipping. you're going to have to keep him on lead and start teaching him to settle. I would start teaching him to settle when he's already calm and there's nobody there. Uh, settle maybe even if you, yes, to settle to lie down or have a mat or something to settle on, <clears throat> but get it a really, really solid thing before you, introduce excitement and then do it gradually with only minor excitement i i think um but and meanwhile don't let him do it it's easy enough just keep him on lead <clears throat> yeah well so i've tried keeping him on lead when i go there as well and that was like one of the other things i've tried um but then he's just like constantly pulling and he just wants to play with the other dogs try this Try tying the lead around your waist. Keep your hands off it. <clears throat> so he's tied to you. He'll soon realize everywhere you go, he's got to go. Well, so I did it where when I was sitting down, 
I sit on the leash. And then when I was up, I was holding the leash. So he was like with me constantly. So we kind of tried that, not just like, not literally tied around my waist. Well, if it's, if it is like that, if you do tie it around your waist, he'll know you haven't got your hands on it. <clears throat> he'll know he can't move away from you. And I would, and that way, in a way, it doesn't convey your emotions down the lead, does it? <clears throat> right. That's a good point. Mm. Um, well, yeah, sorry. So when you said gradually introduce excitement for when you're trying to teach settle when they're already calm. So like when no one's around, Olaf is very calm and he will do a plethora exactly. of tricks. Well, the whole thing about teaching something is you gradually add distractions. You add distractions and duration, if you like. So if you're teaching him to lie and settle down, to begin with, it's going to be a very short time. But gradually you increase the duration and you in, then you introduce distractions. So, um, you know, you get have to get the, the behavior fairly solid before you start introducing the, the distractions. What do you mean by distractions? Like being like, oh my God, or well, like, you could do a little bit of it. Maybe, no. Um, if it's people coming to the house, or so you could, well, it's that just go to the door and open it and shut it again. I mean, that would be a distraction. Um, you could then shut, open the front door and get him to do it with the door open. You know, you could gradually, I mean, I just can't really think, but you add, add distractions which are appropriate to what you want to achieve. <clears throat> okay. I mean, you know, distractions eventually, it could be um, when somebody's been in your house for quite a long time, get him to do it, and when he's already calmed down. Mm -hmm. Just takes a bit of work. And I think we ought to stop in a minute, it's gone, but Sarah, is there anything you'd like? We haven't really, we've neglected you. Um, no, I mean, I'm sort of taking different things on board, really. I mean, I've tried, I mean, we've had this sort of reaction to people since Bear was about four months old. Um, we've got a, an 11 year old who's as well, a Labradoodle, who is quite reactive, but she's, um, you can calm her down quite quickly, whereas Bear kind of goes from naught to 100 in seconds. Um, so I think she, I'm, I've been thinking about it over the last few days, and I think she kind of she will sit at the front of the house and bark at people going past. And as soon as he settles, she'll bark, he'll be up. And I'm seeing that that's the kind of trigger stacking. So that by the time we go out, I, I'm thinking, well, there's not that much that's gone on, but actually that's happened a couple of times in the morning. We've then gone on a walk and he's kind of gone a bit reactive. So, or very reactive. Can they see out? Um, can they see out? Often. She can, although I've, I've stopped her sitting where she does now. I've moved her into a different room so she can't see at the front. So I'm hoping to kind of stop that. Um, so That's that he the older dog, is it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, but she was, she was bitten when she was quite young. So I think it's kind of escalated from when she was younger. Um, so her sort of nervousness and um, you know, the over, the reactiveness to people and I mean she was obviously bitten by a dog so she was you know quite reactive to dogs but um yeah I, I think that's where a lot of his issues are coming from it's kind of being fed down the line from her the thing um, is you know it needs it needs all this stuff needs deliberate work what we what we tend to do is just take our dogs for the walks and just try to cope with things as they crop up mm -hmm. actually you need to deliberately set up situation mm. go to places deliberately where you are going to be able to work on it yeah i mean today i mean i took him to the usual place where we go in the fields we were quite a distance we actually saw someone for a change because we don't normally we were quite a distance from this person i straight away put the food on the floor for him to to eat um they both were eating it together but he's still as soon as that had gone he was still lunging pulling and he's very you know he's big he's very strong as i said to you earlier he's you know he's broken the tip of my finger pulling we're going to um, have a chat anyway aren't we yes yeah, yeah. We'll but, have a this is all in a harness and I, I literally cannot control him and he's obviously he's nine months he's got a bit of growing to do yet so i do need to get him under control yeah, we'll, we'll have a chat about yeah it. yeah okay I think that perhaps, you know, we've just gone on for an hour and a quarter, so it's been good. I hope hopefully we've found it a little bit useful. Uh, it's not been very specific to any one person, but, you know, it, uh, in general principle, hopefully it's, um, it's, it's, it's what is so clear, isn't it? How every, 
you think, oh, well, dogs are reactive to people or dogs, and it's all going to be the same, but it's not, isn't it? Every single person's um, dog and experience and situation is different. Can I say uh, something to Megan, just about the yak bar? Yeah. Because you had advised us, um, Theo had advised us about the yak bar, and Ben just wouldn't take to it at all. And somebody in Pets at Home said to me, have you tried microwaving it? Just slightly. And it puffs it up. And the outside becomes quite easy to chew, and then they get the taste for it. And then Ben absolutely loves them now. But I, I didn't know that, but I just thought maybe it would help. So I should say that when you have a little bit of it left, to microwave made the last bit, and it pops out like popcorn, um, rather than having a choke on it. But I didn't think of that. That's a great idea, isn't it? Do you wet it before you microwave it? Do you cover no. it? You just put it no, in there? Just Put it in, yeah, just put it in, but be very careful because the center can get very hot without you realizing it. The outside feels cool. Okay, so just a few seconds in the microwave, or yeah. like just just watch it puffing up, just uh, just to just soften. Okay. So, just soften the outside. And once they they start to chew oh. it and they get the taste for it, they love it. Oh, that's a great idea. Thank you so much. <laughs> but they're quite expensive. If you make it too <clears throat> too crunchy, they'll you'll just eat it. <clears throat> but it's safe for them to digest, right? Yes, it's made of milk. Yuck, milk. Yeah. Anyway, shall we say goodbye? I've what I've got the thing recorded. If anybody wants um, wants it, let me know. I I shan't actually put it on anything because I think it's not specific enough. Um, Maybe it would be relevant if you put it in the event page because I know some people wanted to join and weren't able to. Like, yeah, that's I will. I'll do that. I will. Um, I'll put it up there for a while, anybody who's missed it. Okay, if, if you're all right with that, are you happy with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you, thank you. Bye bye then. Thank I'm you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you tonight. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. I hope you feel better, Bridget. Thank you. Bye. Bye. bye.